I believe that there are two main things that we all want our web scrapers to be, and that's efficient and effective. So whatever the purpose and need for getting the data off the web, if you're unable to meet those two criteria, you're gonna have a bad time, you're gonna struggle and not be able to complete your tasks. So in this video, I've put together just a few tips that hopefully might get you to think a bit more and might help you improve your code and your web scraping as you go. So the first one is to make sure you investigate the site properly. Now, what I mean by that is that you make sure that you check out what the view source looks like. You check out the inspect element. You see where the data is coming from and how it looks like. And that's before you even start to choose an approach. If you actually start and uh, go ahead and do this properly to start with. So if you look at the HTML properly before you start trying to pass it, and then you realize that the data is actually coming from the API that you can find, or maybe nested in that HTML is some what looks like JSON data that you can pull out instead of passing through all the tags, then you're definitely gonna to start to improve your scraping and cut down on the amount of code you need and you'll be able to speed the whole thing up. I always find that this is probably the one that people struggle with the most because it sets them off down a path where they think they need to do something when they don't actually need to or because they haven't actually investigated properly and checked out the site. You're also gonna to wanna to work out how the pages work and how pagination is, so you can work out the best method whether you want to, whether you can change the number of the page in the URL, or maybe you can find the next page button and use the link in there. My second tip in this is gonna be, when you're learning and when you're starting out, make sure you save a copy of the HTML or the JSON or whatever you're working with your hard drive and then pass it locally. What happens sometimes is if you're trying to work out how to get the data out of the HTML or what information you want from that JSON response, if you start making multiple requests over and over again, not only is it going to be slower, but you might find that you start spamming the server too much or and maybe get blocked or get noted for suspicious activity. It's just not needed as well when you're trying to, all you're trying to do is take whatever bits of information from that HTML or JSON that you're looking for. So make sure that you save a copy of the page to your hard drive. You can do that easily through requests in Python. And then you open another Py, Py file and start interrogating it and working out the quickest and easiest way for you to get that data off that page. My third tip is going to be knowing what you want to achieve and what you want to get out. Generally nowadays for all of my programming or my coding, I tend to write some kind of scope or brief that just keeps me on track and shows me what I want to actually try and achieve with this project. So I always use markdownfiles.md. If you don't know what that is, definitely look it up. It's a really useful way of just storing information and notes, and it can be read easily in all code editors. What I like to do is I like to quickly write out a few lines of text at the top of what I think I want to achieve and how I'm going to do it. I'll write out things like write a function to complete this or take the data from here and then we need to clean it with this, write a function to do that. I just find that it really helps you keep on track and make sure you know what you're doing and where you're up to in your project. Otherwise you can just keep writing and writing and writing code. Before you know it, you've put something where you didn't want it to be. Maybe you're cleaning data as it comes out and what you wanna do is do it all at the end with everything and you can help speed up your process that way. It's also a really good way of keeping track of what you're trying to do and what you've done so far far uh, you can cross it off or just mark it off when you're done and also when you re revisit your projects there's some kind of like a readme file that's available for you um, that you can work with there to go along with this I would so highly recommend that you learn how to use git if you don't know how to already and you store all of your files and your your uh, your work on github it's really good practice you're going to need to know how to use it going forward so make sure you get into the habit of adding committing writing some kind of message and pushing those files to github or whatever one you choose the next one which kind of falls into the line with the last one is to try not to overcomplicate it Try to think about what you actually wanted to achieve from our last point and go ahead and try and find the simplest way to do that. At the end of the day, all we're trying to do is pull data from the website. We don't want to write in a load of other things that do, do it at that point. 
If you are trying to write some kind of data analysis program, I would suggest that you kind of split it up a bit more and you get the data in one line, in one place, you save it and then you work with it. So you have your, your sort of your, your pipeline down, you save your data and then you can work with it from there. Don't try and do too many things in one Pi file. Uh, it will get cluttered and overcomplicated and you won't understand what you're doing or where it's going. If I'm going to be writing long projects, they are all going to be split up and organized neatly into files and folders. It just makes it so much easier. Uh, and again, using Git helps with this too. My last tip, which is pretty important, so last but not least type of thing, is that make sure you pick the right tool for the job. Now this seems quite obvious, but there are lots of web scraping libraries out there. Um, there are some key ones, which I've uh, done a video on comparing them. But picking the right one for what you're trying to achieve is really important. Unless, of course, you're doing a learning experience, in which case you want to learn how to use Scrapey, use Scrapey all the time, and so you know it inside out. That's obviously the best way. But if you're trying to actually get something done or trying to achieve something for a personal project or maybe for a client, picking the right tool is really important. Now, I tend to stick to the popular ones. I use requests a lot. Uh, I use request HTML a lot too. That's my favorite one at the moment. And I find that using CSS selectors is the best option for me. So even when I have to use Beautiful Soup 4, I tend to look for the CSS selector option in there. I just find it more useful and I understand CSS selectors better. So if you're just doing a really short one page scrape, I wouldn't recommend using Scraper, you don't need to. Go ahead and use the minimum that you can get away with or the one that's gonna fit best. I often find that a lot of people come to me and say, I'm trying to do this and they're trying to render the page. They've got requests HTML or they're trying to use Selenium or something like that when there is just such a more, much simpler option there. If you'd have followed through these steps and investigated the site properly first, you might have found that the data is coming from an API endpoint and we can skip passing altogether. And that just makes our lives so much easier and use up so much less resources or you might find that you actually do need to render the page, but you can get away with just using the Chromium browser in request HTML, or maybe you're using Scrapey and you wanna use Splash. So make sure when you check out the site, you pick the most appropriate tool for the job. Maybe you're trying to do async, but you only need to do the request. Maybe you would look at AIO HTTP, because you just wanna do a load of requests in one go. So this is by no means an exhaustive list, but I find that these are the ones I get asked the most, or I come across the most, and I'm trying to find the easiest way to get you from point A to point B whilst learning as much as you can. So I definitely recommend that you start taking these on board. There's gonna be more things like this on my channel guys, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know down below with a comment and maybe hit that like button. Uh, subscribe always helps too. I've got loads of web scraping content on my channel and more to come. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.